advertising or proposing to advertise right now. And these are system repairs that are being funded by the Natural Resources Conservation Service. I, I saw someone in the audience may, may not be excited to speak on, on this subject. But I, you mentioned on the Ardmore Bridge, obviously we learned a lot about community engagement. <coughs> uh, and with this much work going on, uh, there will be a lot of instances where people are upset when their neighborhoods are disrupted. Not as upset as they were when the neighborhood was underwater, but upset when it's disrupted. And you, you're contemplating whether you do an RFP or some process to get experts to help us in line with what the new judge was saying about citizens' participation. Yeah, I'm glad you're bringing that up, Commissioner, because I think you know that the issue with the Ardmore Bridge has been huge, and I did want to ask Russ about that. You know what you guys have learned from that and how you plan to improve on community consultation going forward once the project is already uh, been determined. Sure. So if you go back and look at the bond or language that was included in uh, the proposed package that the voters approved back in August, there is a line item in there that basically says any effort that the district undertakes that does not have a completed preliminary engineering report, it requires us to have at least one engagement with the community, potentially two or more, depending upon the complexity, scope, and size of the project. So in response to that, in October of last year, we prepared about a 12-page document that outlines our community outreach program for each of those bond programs. And so I actually have a draft of that. I'd be glad to share that with the court members, and we're even going to look at posting that to our website, and that way we can get official, even additional comments back from the residents. But that's basically outlines at a high level what our community engagement plan is for those projects that we will be reaching out to the residents to get additional information and input so that we can make sure we're implementing the right projects and, and the right subdivisions and right areas of town. And, and Judge, I know when we get to your item on, on equity, it will probably be a broad discussion, but away from the equity issue, uh, I think what we learned is that, you know, nothing is better than that old school snail mail mm -hmm. uh, that goes to people. It's not enough to just do a press release and, you know, or to uh, put it on the, on the social media. You know, it may cost a little money, but we got to do it. And, I, you know, I, I'm even learning now that it's that precinct one, we're, we're trying to do a lot of street projects. And, uh, you know, like in that same neighborhood with University of Houston and, and Texas Southern, I, I told the universities, as much as I want to have the county spend money in the city, they've got to play a role in making sure people know as well. Or if not, I'll pull it back, but it may not be there. Once they've explained it, so they need to explain it to people in advance. But I think we all learned a lot from that. On the broader issue of equity, when we get to it, I think we're going we're gonna to learn a lot. And I think this process that you, that you all, that these experts are coming in, I just think there are people around the state and around the country, even sometimes down the street, who've had to put more of a spotlight on what they do uh, than we have. It, it'll come in handy, it'll help us to avoid issues like that. Because on that Ardmore Bridge, nothing would be worse. And every time there's a rain event, I'm calling and asking about that part. A phrase, uh, but we want to make sure people know that it's timely, uh, but we don't want to obviously not do the projects or lose federal money. That's, that's a key concern. I'm glad you brought that up. That's correct. Yeah. And just so you know, so all of the consultant contracts that we have associated with the bond program, we are requiring that they do have a communications uh, sub-consultant, if you will. That means that they've got additional resources there to help make sure that these community meetings run when they're adequately staffed. Uh, Russ, uh, if I may, going back to the question that the judge had about the uh, government shutdown, are there projects that would be refunded to the county? In other words, have you started some uh, projects that would otherwise be out of federal recovery dollars that are being paid for out of general funds that now may be at risk as a result of the, uh, the shutdown? At risk might be a strong word. I think it might, they might be a little bit delayed because we're hopeful that at some point the the federal government resumes and, and things sort of go back to business. But I can say as part of the bond effort that we've got going, the numbers that I just mentioned, we have around 42 additional applications that are grant applications in for either singular projects or groupings of projects to five different federal agencies. And those applications total just over $800 million. And so that's, that's what we've done since the bond program came online and, and as part of the Harvey recovery. 
since those applications have been made, we've been awarded a right around $250 million worth of that over $800 million. And that includes our local match as well. So that's kind of where we stand with that. But to your point, uh, as I understand it, some of the CDBG community development block grant funding that is administered through Housing and Urban Development HUD is potentially on hold until the government does resume, the federal government. And what's the pressure point of the shutdown versus what we can continue to spend? Well, if I think with their locally funded projects, the, what's going on in D.C. doesn't have an impact on.